Welcome to the theater of magic. Seven o'clock. Magic. Eight o'clock. Hocus pocus. Nine o'clock. Packed magic. Ten o'clock. Vanquish the chain. Eleven o'clock. You must break through. Midnight madness. Tiger song. <laughs> Mystifying. Unbelievable. Spectacular. The theater awaits. Well, good day, guys. Welcome to the Theatre of Magic. My name is Greg, and today we are going to do a end of year review special. And um, what I thought we'd do is have a, again have a little bit of fun today, but really reflect back on you know how this I was going to say last year has gone with the Theatre of Magic, but we've only been going for five months, so <laughs> we'll talk about the review of the last five months since this is the first end of year review, and. With a bit of a chat, you know, what what did I manage to achieve with this channel? What did you see during these uh, sessions? And, you know, what did I miss out on? What things did I expect that I, I wanted to do but didn't get around to doing? So we'll have a look at some of that. Then I think also what we'll do is we'll go around the, uh, go around the theatre. We'll look at each machine and I'll give you a little bit of insight in terms of, you know, what's the story with it in terms of what am I going to do with it going forward? Um, I have some plans, different plans for each machine here and you know well, let's, let's talk about the options for some of that and also let's just you know have a drink, <laughs> have a drink with me, have a beer I'm gonna, I don't normally like drinking you know well, drinking beer and stuff <laughs> during an episode uh, but today's different today we're going to relax it's end of year we've done a lot together and uh, i feel like we need a beer and i'll tell you what just even setting up today i started at um i don't know about four o'clock and i set up something which i think is quite special or at least is special to me and i'm going to share it with you near the end um, of the video, I don't get too excited, <laughs> but it's something pretty cool. It took me a little while to set that up, uh, but that's now set up. And then I had to deal with yes, yet another Windows update on the main box, and Hyper Marquee decided to stop working, and so I had to go through and fix that. But don't get me started. Uh, I will turn off networking. I've already turned off, or at least delayed all the updates and so forth. But I'm actually just going to disable the network cards on these. PCs now because I'm I've had it I've had it up to here with updates just destroying things. Um, anyway, I was about to have a drink and I'm going to do that now. Mm. That's good. So now I did have a got a bit of a list here. So you're going to see me looking down. I don't normally do lists for this channel or any sort of preparation, which you might have gathered. It's all off the cuff. But there was a few things I wanted to sort of point out in this video and so I've got some things to cover off here. So the first thing is, you know, <laughs> let's get back to the start here. Well, why did I why did I call the, this whole channel the Theatre of Magic? I may have touched on it, I think, on the very first episode I did. But this this room was was always the theatre before I had all the games in, in here. I had my main box and had my virtual pinball for a long time, but other than that, in here really it was a movie theatre. And of course, a long time before that, you see some of the early episodes, you'd know that this was like a dining living room area. Complete waste of space. So it was always a theatre. And then I got this virtual pen and then I wanted to sort of dress it up and give it some nice graphics. It was an old World Cup machine and the sides were pretty plain and boring so I wanted to jazz it up. So I sort of was looking through thinking about what you know what I could call it given the fact it's going to play all different types of tables anyway and I didn't want to go for one of those big sort of multi-coloured you know have every sort of pen on the side type thing. I wanted something fairly stylish and um, and I landed on, on Theatre of Magic, of course, the pinball. And that just seemed like the perfect, perfect solution. And given the fact that this whole, you know, room is set up with virtualized equipment, it's all a little bit magical in here. You know, not only the arcades, but even the drums, it's all virtual. So Theatre of Magic stuck um, in terms of at least, you know, dressing up the pinball. So with, along with everything else, when I came to name the channel, I thought, well, <laughs> it's fairly obvious, just call it that. 
So yeah, that's that's uh, that's a little bit of background uh, on the name. And if we look at the the things, you know, in terms of achievements up up to now up with this channel and the first thing of course just getting the damn thing off the ground i know if you yourself may have thought about or have started or even have your own youtube channel uh it's quite a a daunting prospect to start you know initially you sort of think it's you know, how hard could it be <laughs> set up a camera record yourself talking chuck it up you know earn millions <laughs> it doesn't doesn't quite work that way and you know unless you're filming exploding cat videos or something we just need to to film them and chuck it up anything else you know stuff like this yeah it takes a bit of planning a bit of thought um you know, a lot of work goes into it but it's not work if you enjoy it and that's exactly where i'm at with this um this channel i'm enjoying it i'm enjoying the process i'm enjoying sharing my thoughts with you sharing um, what I'm doing in here with with you um, again I think I've said it before why not you know I'm, I'm doing so many changes and improvements and additions and you know I've got stories from back in the day all the way up to today in the, in the arcade area and, and I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be of interest and clearly it is for some of you and we've got some early subscribers to the channel which is fantastic so um, you know that's that makes me happy that you know that there are people out there that want to see this sort of stuff me rambling on <laughs> i don't know what's great about that but <laughs> if you like it um thank you so yeah so very much um you know starting this channel was was really about sharing those those experiences and, and the hobby that i'm in provide you some help and if there's some entertainment along the way well, well great uh, and a bit of a historic sort of, you know, a personal historic um, capture of what I'm doing. You know, it's quite cool to sort of look back and think, oh, you know, that's where I was then and all the things that have happened and you know, going on little adventures and, and, you know, again, stuffing things up. <laughs> you know, all those little things make the whole journey worthwhile to record and, and, and also to reflect back. And I do feel that, you know, my kids m might not really appreciate everything that I have here and you know what I've done in the past and my history in, in terms of arcades and arcade gaming and, and the love of, of that and maybe one day they'll you know start looking into these videos and, and watch them later in life when they're more interested you know you change as you go throughout life you like different things um, you know, I'm, I'm sure they're not really interested in, their, in watching their old dad, uh, you know, um, yak on about our old arcade machines right now. But they might do later on. So yeah, it's a bit of, a bit, a bit of that. The other thing is, is that I, I really do quite enjoy doing the video production side. Um, that's always pretty cool, keeping those skills up. I did do a couple of. Um, uh, Japanese uh, drift racing and auto salon type um, well DVDs they, they weren't pr completely professional but you know I was back in you know sort of 2002 and so I've had my hand in, in a bit of video editing and, and production by no means um, to any massive great professional level but I, I, I enjoy it I enjoy I enjoy that creative process just another sort of artistic outlet for me personally um, and yeah, I, I like, you know, challenging myself and sort of trying to take it to the next, next level. Um, so yeah, I, I, I certainly like that and presentation skills, you know, it's actually really hard initially to just sit in front of the camera and start talking. You initially are, you know, you're very sort of self-conscious of what you say. You tend to talk fast. You don't think enough <laughs> and that's why there are many occasions where you'll see in some of the videos that we've done and I've, I've you know on regular occasions I've put little overdubs to say you know what I should have said because I've stuffed up during you know during the video and it's funny because when you're filming like I'm filming now and I'm you know I'm feeling a little bit more relaxed about being filmed <laughs> since the first one I think everyone goes through that um, but you know you you you're thinking so much about what you're going to say next <laughs> that you often you know just say strange blunders and when you're sitting down on the couch watching your video back 
you're in a real clear frame of mind and when you're listening to it you can really analyze it and you can come up with the answers you know if, if i miss something straight away I've lo i look back at myself and go geez man come on <laughs> what are you saying so uh, then i have to put those little annotations up to correct myself so anyway it's an interesting thing and and um you know the skill of talking in front of a camera it all helps with doing presentations and presentation skills and that sort of stuff uh, that helps me in my broader role um, in in IT. I think it's just a good skill to keep keep homing in. So anyway, enough of that. Um, what else do I do it for? Well, is it about making money? Because a lot of YouTubers, of course, do make a lot of money on YouTube. Um, so maybe I should share with you exactly how much the millions that I've made so far in the last five months. <laughs> course I haven't made millions or anywhere near that uh, it's definitely not about making money I've in five months I've done 23 videos up until this one be the 24th and I've averaged about four hours per video so that's 90 92 hours of work so what have I got back from YouTube for my 90 hours of work well two dollars and 36 cents <laughs> That's right, two dollars, but that's U.S. That's U.S. So you convert that to Australian. That's three dollars and twenty-seven cents. Thank you very much. I'm rich. I'm finishing. I'm retiring. I'm going on holiday. <laughs> so I'm buying myself a coffee. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Anyway, so yeah, um, I hope that uh, that gives you a, a bit of insight into it you know it took me a year to start the channel and you know in terms of i thought about the idea and you know i i do this a lot with with fairly big decisions and it is a big decision because it's a big time commitment so i had to think it very carefully over you know a period of time of the impact that it would have and if i really wanted to do it and if i really wanted to keep doing it and could i keep up the you know the weekly production schedule which i've luckily managed to do just uh, and you know when it came down to it i thought i've got a passion i've got a passion for arcade stuff i love doing this stuff so i can't see why not and i'm not going to beat myself up if i miss you know miss a particular week I mean, occasionally i have you know a couple of issues i have a problem with the pc or the or the hard drive or the files or the upload or something gone wrong and 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 some of these you know some of these files are pretty big so the last processing and stuff can actually take you know two to three hours and if i miss that sort of deadline or if it's two in the morning or something when i finish it it doesn't get up so anyway but i'm committed guys i am committed to try and get one out every uh every week and uh we'll, we'll see how far that goes into 2017 and, and from a production point of view you know equipment perspective i bought a nice camera for this actually specifically for this one with a floating lens so hopefully you've noticed that you know when i do you know move the camera around and stuff it, it moves pretty fluidly because of the floating lens in this particular sony um and you know i, I find that a lot of youtubers you know don't pay enough attention to that and it irks me when i'm watching other channels because i'm watching it on a huge projector screen and if it's flicking around and jerky and all over the place i start actually feeling seasick so, so i thought oh well, i don't want to do that i'll try and keep it as smooth as possible it's not going to be perfect but yeah hopefully um you are enjoying that the footage is smooth and in times like this you know it's on a tripod so it's not moving around I think one of the golden rules, you know, you're supposed to let the subject move in your picture. Don't move the camera <laughs> around the subject, so to speak. Um, keep it still. That's quite a challenge to do when you're filming. You sort of feel like you have to move. And the other thing is the audio. And this audio, hopefully it's playing nice with me. I'm just watching the indicators at the moment because I have had a couple of problems with the last couple of episodes. And noticed that I was getting some real static hiss through parts of the video and i had to cut those things, those aspects out and i had to redo parts of it as well which was a real hassle uh, but this, this is a pretty high high-end uh mic set up here and with the lapel mic and um something's going on with it and i'm not sure what it is i think it's the unit on the the, the receiver on the camera but i do have some little signal bars here that i'm keeping an eye on 
newspaper so often just to make sure I don't see like a constant, um, you know, um, bars from, from it hissing. So anyway, yeah, so, so a bit of investment in, in that, which obviously my $2.36 US from YouTube is chipping away at, so I slowly get that money back by the time I'm uh, 85, probably. So, what else did I do? Well, the other thing is the, the title, and uh, let me just take another sip of the beer here, the, other, the, 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 the title screen to the Theatre of Magic. Do you recognise it? Is it something that pulls on your memory? <laughs> well, those of you that were around back uh, in the 80s would have known of a very popular music video program called Ready to Roll, and it was um, it was big in, in New Zealand at the time, and I'm pretty sure it was pretty big in Australia here. And that was that way. <laughs> God, things times have changed. That was the weekly fix of music videos, you know, um, and that's just staggering, you know, I mean all you had before that was radio, tapes, your records, and then that weekly slot, half an hour slot for ready to roll, and, and watch half an hour of, of the top video clips, and, and it was so cool, I, you know, I used to remember watching that every single week religiously, and that starting music was so cool. And it sort of had the you know, similar sort of effects that I tried to put in the front of the Theatre of Magic um, intro. Uh, so yeah, I was just curious if any of you guys actually picked up on that. Of course, all the, the words throughout uh, that initial piece are all samples directly from the Theatre of Magic pinball machine. So, and from the ROMs. So I, had, I, had a, I found a program along the way a PC program as well, but I ran it on the Mac and it allowed you to extract out all the individual samples from any ROM and you know play them individually. So that's what I did. I went through and I extracted every single uh, voice piece of the Theory of Magic Pinball and then slotted it into you know overlaid it onto that sort of RTR backing track to create the. Um, the front end song guys so, yeah i don't know i'd be interested to know if any of you pick pick that up um and and recognize that uh that music and the other thing i did which is interesting is the is before i started the first episode i scripted it i i actually started writing out a, a, a script and this is the first like right now i'm sort of following off not a detailed script, but just some key points I want to follow. It's not a bad thing to do in this, this situation. But I think for everything else, it's much better just to freeform it. And, you know, it took so long to create that script. And I felt also it was a little bit, you know, it was a little bit fake. Um, you know, I, I practiced using a, you know, teleprompter and stuff. And, you know, I was reasonably good at it, I guess. But... Then you're reading the news, <laughs> it sort of loses that personal touch. So I hope you guys sort of enjoy this more freeform um, chatting style. Yeah, it's gonna, it's not gonna be quite maybe as professional, but maybe it's a little bit more personal. And and I'd rather have the channel be that way. And again, I don't want this to be a real working effort, like dreading every time to do a video that oh my god, I've got to you know sit down and write out pages of scripts. So I didn't want to do that, and you know that just slows down the whole whole production process. So let's talk about that was all about the channel. So hopefully that gives you a good insight in terms of the the you know the whole thought process behind the channel and and how it sort of progressed to, to here. Now if we think about the arcade, because now we're going to do a bit of a review more about what actually achieved in here. If you, some of you followed me right from the beginning, um, would know the full journey. And if, if you've just joined recently, then you know go back and check out those earlier videos, sort of give you a good idea of the, the, the progressive journey that I've been on here. And you know that initial move that remember we did that really massive move and moved everything around here and you know especially moved the drums from one side of the room over to the other and that was a brilliant brilliant change in here it's made the area so much more usable and that was definitely a big achievement getting the sega uh Astro city and the sega blast that was another win i'd been thinking about those 
for a long time and just hadn't seen them come up and you know that was a really good score and of course what a journey that's been to get those back up um, and and running and of course the big achievement is is getting the Astro City all happily working here god I love that machine you know out of all the machines here it's right up there in terms of my my favorite now um, the um, skills that I've had to pick up along the way, the washing of monitors, the char um, discharging uh, monitors, the, the degaussing with the speaker trick, <laughs> um, rewiring the, the Astros, all the strange things with the LAI cabs and, you know, finding out more about that. All that's been really, really cool to, to learn over the last uh, five months. Scoring the Hyper Olympic slash Defender cab that was cool too that was you know i love finding those just random things that come up in gumtree and if they're local and they can pick them up um that's what that's, that's exciting <laughs> that's what that makes this uh this hobby really exciting is watch the weird and wonderful things that come up all the time so that was cool i've just managed as i mentioned before to get the, a video out every week it's been a little bit touch and go a couple of times, but yeah, you know, we're, we're, we're getting them out. There's plenty of content, guys, coming. I've got plenty of ideas, lots more to come. So I don't think I'm gonna run out of any ideas soon. And I've made lots of cool contacts through Aussie Arcade, you know, in terms of the last five months of, of doing, you know, the last updates and picking up machines and bits and pieces. So that's been really cool. And of course, Joey at JMac, saved me for every single monitor issue that I've had and what a what a nice guy he is in terms of you know he takes his time to explain stuff to you he's got a wealth of knowledge maybe one day we could do a, a session now I don't know how he'd feel about being filmed but I might approach the topic with him one day and see how he feels but that guy is just you know he's an encyclopedia of arcade knowledge <laughs> the stories he could tell so such a nice guy heaps of skills and also you know you guys um for you that have subscribed uh for new people that are watching uh you know i think that's a i, I see that as a, a success and an achievement that people you know like yourselves want to carry come back and watch more i think that's cool i thank you for it um, the more people that you know join the channel and contribute, and uh, in terms of you know some discussions, I'm happy to get into the YouTube comments and and, and you know have a discussion. Um, so many questions you might have, just you know ask away, and I can always bring them back into a future episode as well. Maybe I'll get a little bit formal with that. I don't have any other like Twitter or Facebook or anything else set up. Uh, maybe one day we'll do that, but you know, we're pretty small and, and intimate at the moment. So the last thing is, yeah, I was talking about subscribers. So we've got 34 subscribers, which is cool. <laughs> so it's 34 people, that's fantastic. And uh, it's funny, you know, you see some other YouTubers and they're celebrating their one millionth subscriber. <laughs> I don't think we'll get anywhere near that. We're quite a niche channel. It's a niche, niche topic, I understand that. So we'll probably remain relatively small and intimate. We'll see, see how we go. Now, what didn't I achieve that I really wanted to do uh, over the last five months? And one of the things was um, I wanted, I had a lot of sort of series of episode themes that I wanted to do, which I just haven't got to maybe half of those. Um, so, you know, the, 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 um, the series like, you know, what's in the theater and pick up videos and stuff like that, you know, there are individual theories on, uh, series on the channel. So I, I've, you know, there's a lot more of those that I haven't managed to do, um, which is cool. I mean, it means there's a lot more content and stuff to come. So it's no real biggie, but I thought I was going to be able to cover a lot more than I, than I have. I haven't even covered every machine in here in terms of what's in the theater. The, you know, the ironic thing is the theater of magic pinball was the one that I was supposed to really cover off, uh, given it's the theme and, uh, you know, it's got a lot going on with it. I haven't got to it yet. Just everything else just keeps sort of jumping in front of the queue. So, you know, that one and, the, uh, the cocktail table and, um, the, the the two cocktail tables actually the main one and the missile command they haven't been done 
haven't done a feature on the championship sprint. I keep saying this actually on each video, which ones I haven't done. They will get done in 2017. We shall definitely get to there. Uh, the Sega Blast and the Hyper Olympic, I actually really wanted to get working before Christmas and I, have managed to, I haven't managed to meet that deadline, mainly because that Sega Blast absolutely killed me in terms of getting it apart, as you may know, from previous episodes. So yeah, that, um, that Blast will, uh, that will be the next video actually in the new year because <laughs> it's been done. So we'll get back to the work <laughs> and uh, you'll see see that particular video. But I did I did did want to get that sorted out. And just some little things in here, guys. There's some lighting and stuff. I've got, so I use the Hue, uh, the Philips Hue system in here for changing colors. I've had, uh, let's see, two, two bulbs go and one I accidentally smashed the front and one of the LED colors of the red is gone on it, the other two work. So I need to get those replaced. I've got some fiber optic lights in the, in the ceiling above where the theater is. The main light source for that in the ceiling is blown. I've got a couple of um, down lights uh, which are out. I had a laser light thing up the top there that's gone. Look, it doesn't make a big thing for the channel, but they're just little things that I wanted to sort of sort out in the, in the theater to get, sort of get it ship shape. But again, all the other things have, have come along in terms of keeping me busy. And I guess the last thing, the last thing, guys, before we uh, we go around and, and have a look at each machine, is what what was the any surprises? You know, was there any surprises about this channel and and the journey that I've been on? And and the funny funny thing is, is the biggest surprise for me was I didn't think I would spend so much time doing the restore type videos. I, I didn't aim for this channel to be sort of so focused on you know taking down and fixing up machines as such I, I thought I'd be doing sharing more of the you know the nostalgic value and not reviewing games but just you know reflecting on certain games and the rationale why well, there's so many YouTube channels about you know reviewing games and all the rest of it I just think I, I'd rather ex share the sort of ex my experience at least and, and maybe that resonates with you uh, with a lot of these these games but I've ended up doing a lot of work instead and sometimes I've done some restores which I probably wouldn't have normally gone to the effort that I've, that I've gone through but it's sort of like I, I get started and I feel like well I've, I'm showing other people here that I, I really should do probably the, a really good job or the best job I can do and so I tend to sort of push myself a little bit further each time um, to do more than <coughs> what I would normally do. So yeah, it's been uh, been a lot more more effort in the in the fixing up side of things, guys. So, yeah, but anyway, I, hopefully all that stuff's been 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 useful to you. All right, so that's enough about where we've got to from a discussion point of view. We're gonna go around the room now. Let's look at each of these machines again. As I said, let's just have a discussion about where I think I'm going to take it, what I think of these machines, um, and see if you, you know, have, a, have your own thoughts about these, and if you had them in your collection, what, what would you do? All right, so let's hook over and start with the Championship Sprint. Right, so the Championship Sprint, guys, you know I love this game, right? This game is just awesome. I say it every time, and really good time on this, and, you know, I'm not going to, I'm not going to get tired of this game and the, you know the funny thing is again it's not so much the game itself it's the steering wheels you know it's that whole input mechanism on this game is what makes this game just so so fun so thankful grateful that I've managed to pick this game up this is a keeper for sure I don't see myself ever getting rid of this game <laughs> you know it was um, so much fun to me back in the day uh it's fun to me now and i you know I, I know i was looking for one for ages i really did want that um super sprint the three player one that's a massive machine though never seen one of those come up i remember seeing someone advertising in gumtree who wanted one for like over a year a year and a half and i think if they ever got one or not there's a few over east i know that i don't know if there is one over here but anyway this was the next best thing and it's a little bit more compact um it's a sensational game so 
really what's the plans for 2017 for this machine well um, I uh, you know again I haven't done the video about the sort of pickup and I will do that because there's still some things uh, that I'd like to share with you about this machine but in 2017 um, you know I got the, well initially I got this machine just working and it needs further work let's put it that way sort of more preventative maintenance type of things because there's a few things that are a little bit not dodgy but a little bit of a concern and I'll, and I'll cover those when we when when we cover this particular machine it hasn't been cleaned up thoroughly you know the magic eraser needs to be hit on this there's a few things that need to be fixed up the top around the back is um is actually i mean this is all plywood around the side because it's an lai cab but it was made with plywood but the top and the back wasn't it's was a chipboard and it's all degraded it's pretty poor the rest is all pretty sweet uh, so there's those things that need to be fixed up with it but then the two biggest changes that may happen during the year one is that um, I probably will end up putting a 25 inch medium res monitor in here rather than the uh, existing 20 this is the, the original size for the for the machine so this is original um, some of you will probably say well you should really keep it original since the whole rest of the cab is and I agree with you to a point but this is a machine I'm going to keep <laughs> for as long as I can and I see quite a few people do swap this out for the bigger screen I've got this massive area here for the type of game that it is having that extra real estate would just make the gameplay that much better as well it would just look awesome uh, I've, you know, again, I've seen a few few people that have done it, and it does look really, really, really good. So, yeah, I think that's on the cards. The other thing, this particular monitor uh, is very difficult to get with medium res in this size, and Joey ended up sourcing this one for me um, because I did have to do a swap, which is sort of part of the the whole pickup fix up on this video on on this machine, and. Um, and it was really the only one that he could he could give me, which I think was one part of his test rig actually. But it's got some burn in here, um, and that burn, oh, funnily enough, is it really shows up in this grey and on the road um, more than any other colour. So it just happens to be this game. Probably if it was another game, you, you wouldn't notice. See on this main screen, you can't really tell. Um, but as soon as that grey shows, you start seeing a band. See a little bit of the bands there as well so anyway that's the first thing the second thing is is that i may this would be a bigger bigger challenge um because of all the analog inputs but i may actually end up putting a pc of sorts in here and again don't freak out on me because everything will be completely reversible we'll be able to just switch it back to the original board set but these system two boards are massive in the back here there's potentially things can go wrong um, I'm a little bit worried about the voltages and the, and the length of the wiring and all the rest of it and the resistance and stuff. So I don't know how long the original boards are going to last. And I have seen, you know, some people create, uh, one person in particular I saw on a YouTube video create a really cool multi-game specifically for the, um, you know, for the, for the double drivers, for the double wheels. And there was, you know, there was quite a few little games here that, that can be run with it. So I think that would be quite a cool option and again, you know, easy to be able to swap back if you need to. It needs to be done with a PC though. I can't really use a Raspberry Jammer because it just hasn't sorted out the analog controls. They might get to that at some point, but I believe at the moment that's still a problem. So I'll have to use a PC. So guys, yeah, that's, that's about it. That's probably the two biggest changes I've got planned for this. Otherwise, this is a keeper. It's staying here. I love it. Let's move on to the main machine. Okay, guys. Cheers, by the way, and a happy new year if you're watching this in the new year. <laughs> happy new year. Um, yeah, let's have a, a chat about this this main box because, my goodness, you know, you, if you go back and see that video about this machine, you know that there's a, a long history behind it and how it sort of turned out this way. Um, I I have I don't it's not really a love hate relationship with this machine. Um, but I'm sort of gravitating towards the fact that I, I, I prefer original cabinets to, you know, homemade stuff. But this does have such a history and it's the first start of the whole emulation journey for me. 
I don't know if I've, I'm attached so much to it that you know that's going to keep me from um, throwing it in the bin <laughs> while well, at least moving it on somehow. I don't know. The, the, what, what I really like about it, of course, and uh, as you saw those earlier episodes, you know the hyper marquee and the three, the triple screen setup, the dynamic marquee is awesome. The back screen um, showing what's going on is awesome. This particular uh, screen, remember running at 120 hertz, is also fantastic. Uh, at, at least for an LCD. Again, I'm, you know, I really just want CRTs everywhere at the moment. But hey, I, it, it is pretty good <laughs> at what it does. And you know, this control panel, <laughs> as dysfunctional as it is. Um, yeah, it needs to change. I need to change it. And I think I mentioned that I I, I see this machine as more of a, it's almost like a, a, a tesseract. It's a tesseract, right? So a way to explore all the different games. And in some cases, you know, there's been a few cabinets that have come up recently and they've had certain games or series of games that could work in the particular cabinet and I've come straight onto this box and gone through those games and checked them out and determined, you know, if, if it would if it would potentially work. So it's really, really useful for that. It's awesome to see all the artwork. I really enjoy that, you know, for each of the games and just, you know, reminiscing a little bit and, and laughing at some of the some of the artwork. Um, you know, seeing the cabinets and the control panel and all that, you know, come up. It really is it really is pretty cool. And of course it's houses the fridge as well so and you know if I had a real arcade machine I don't really want to butcher the front to stick a fridge in it and I don't really have any other space in here to put a fridge so it's you know it's housing that very um, important <laughs> aspect of the room and uh, yeah I as I said I don't, just don't know what I should do and it's quite compact now you know it's really quite compact here and of course a lot of real cabinets aren't really this sort of this sort of compact. So I, I don't know. I think what I'm what I'm doing in my mind is is that if that special cab comes along, you know, that that one-off cab comes on, that sort of fits the bill and is original in some way and can you know take the place of this, then it's going to happen. If that doesn't happen, then this guy's going to stay here with me <laughs> for for, the, for a while. And in 2017, more than likely. Out of anything with this machine, the main thing is I, I want to redo this whole panel. And I keep coming back to it, guys. I tried thinking about, you know, a single player layout in the middle of the, the, the machine, because often, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in here playing on my own on, on, on this particular box. Now that I've got the other, uh, you know, the Sega Blast and the Astro City as dual side to side ones, do I really need another side to side one here? You know, I've been playing a lot of trackball games on here, which means then really, you know, it's almost like my key ca trackball ball cab, so shouldn't the trackball be centred in the middle? You know, I was thinking about putting the controls in the middle, the trackpad on the right, and a spinner on the left to sort of cover most games, but not, you know, not two-player, but at least for that test rig sort of thing. So, yeah, this is the dilemma, guys. You know, <laughs> again, I, I let these things just simmer and I think about it and I go back and forth and, you know, I, there's no rush. And I think, you know, one day when I finally feel that I'm, you know, strong on a particular idea, that's the day that I'll go, right, let's, let's, let's get it done. Uh, but I do have some controllers that I purchased that are waiting in the wings as well, some different sort of controllers as well that might be useful in here. won't say much more about that now, but, um, yeah, there's a few things that definitely can be done. Is it a priority right now? No, it's not, because I've got to get that Sega Blast working. I've got to get that Hyper Olympic working. They're, they're the two priorities, and I've got to fix that Missile Command. Um, once those are up and running, then, yeah, then I'm going to start getting onto these sorts of projects, probably. So there you go, guys, and um, good old Bank Panic. Do you like Bank Panic? This was, a, this was a really fun game back in the day. A you know, nice easy three button game. I used to love playing this out at that ice skating rink and, and along with Hyper Olympic. Um, certainly a classic. If you haven't played it, definitely go and play that game. <clears throat> okay, time for another drink. Mm. It's 
thirsty work talking. <laughs> right, so let's move from <coughs> here to the Astro City. Okay, so you know what I'm going to say about the Astro City, don't you? <laughs> I love this machine. <laughs> I love this machine. Uh, this and the Raspberry Jammer in here has just made, you know, getting an, a, an arcade up and running so much easier than, you know, using using PCs. And the thing is, you know, there's no fan in it. It's dead, it's dead quiet when you're not actually playing a game. It's completely, utterly silent. If it's the only machine on in here, it's dead silent until you play. So gone are the old fans of the PCs and all the rest of it. Um, but yeah, this, this is just sensational. I'm so happy how this has turned out. The controls are great and the screen is just awesome. Um, playing, you know, old classics as well as the new sort of shoot 'em ups, all of that is just crazy good. And all I can say to you guys is that if you get a chance to buy one of these machines, you know, and pick up a, a Raspberry Jammer, you know, for what, 220 bucks or something that they, that they sell for, um, the Raspberry Jammer that is, and you know, pick up one of these, and these go for, for, they can go for reasonable sort of money, just do it guys, it's it's such a, you know, if this was the only machine, that I, in fact if I had to choose one machine, it, it would be hard because obviously this is a vertical <laughs> layout, so really if I had a choice of two machines, and I could just have two of these, these guys, and that's all I could have, then that would be my choice, and I would be uh, loving it. It's really that's in in a way all you need. It's only when you start sort of you know going to like championship sprint for certain types of controls or pinball or whatever that you start looking at other stuff. But for pure video games, these are great cabs and you can sit at them with your mates and play them and and be comfortable. And the screen's massive. It's just it's so good. It's so good. And look at this guys, Zaxxon. Here's a game that. I remember, oh and by the way, there's nothing more for me to, to, to do on this machine. It's done. I'm keeping it. <laughs> so um, that's one sort of off the list, you know, uh, in terms of there's nothing more to do and, and, I, and I love it. Uh, but Zaxxon, you know, this game came out and it was, um, gosh, a huge, huge challenge. Um, you know, very, very difficult. The graphics were just awesome. The pseudo 3D graphics here, just amazing. You know, with every other game that came out, everything else was 2D. And this just looks sensational. The game was so hard, so difficult to play. That, that was the only real problem, is that you didn't really feel like you had a a, a long enough turn um, so I ended up not really putting in a, in a, in a lot of quarters into this game um, I've got the sound turned down as well haven't I? I need to turn that up a little bit let's get a little bit of sound going here okay well I must have picked a ROM which has no sound so I just checked a, a couple of other games and they had sound fine so <laughs> so I need to uh, replace this ROM but yeah this game uh, as I said, was was groundbreaking in a number of ways, and uh, you know, just awesome, but but very very difficult. And of course, they came out with Super Zaxxon after this, and that was just impossible. <laughs> this was hard. That was terrible, and it didn't do well in the arcades. And I'm sure that's probably because it's just just too damn hard. No one wants to put twenty cents in and last for like five seconds. You know, you have an opportunity to do that or you're sticking in a, in a uh, Gallagher machine and you can be going for, you know, 40, 45 minutes. <laughs> so, yeah, um, not sure why they decided to come out with an even harder version when the first one was so difficult. But still, great, great game. Absolute classic, you know. Probably the first in that era to come out with that sort of pseudo 3D graphics. I think it was be right there I have to check that up but anyway awesome game let's move along now to the fake Sega Blast now first of all let's talk about this uh, this cabinet because you know I before I got this I really wanted a real Sega Blast and if you remember if you go back to the episode where I talk about this machine 
So I thought it was a Sega Blast, and you know, I had my reservations about it, of course, because it was black and, and you know, the real ones are white. But regardless of that, you know, and I, and I said this on, on the previous video as well, that, you know, when I saw it, it's got the right shape and all the rest of it. And, you know, check, check back on that previous episode when I talk about the difference between this one and a real one, because, yes, it does have a lot of positives. So I got it to a point where... You know, it's all working, I upgraded to XP, um, changed the software, added some new games. Um, I put the extra speakers in there with the subwoofer. So, you know, and the the, um, the jukeboxes in there as well. And all of that works really well, it's really cool, and got it up to a level that, you know, really it is a great machine. But now that I have a real Sega Blast, uh, I feel that, again, you know, leaning towards the whole philosophy of having original cabinets and the limited space that I have in this in the theatre is that this guy is probably going to be sold. So I haven't made up my mind on it yet and it may not happen until I'm completely out of space because um, there's something else that I can do in here which I will talk about which will give me potentially uh, space for maybe two or three more machines and that may actually sit in that space until those other you know spots get filled and then eventually get moved on so um, but that change to make that happen not going to happen soon so this might just get relegated outside in my study or something <laughs> I don't know where guys I just put it somewhere the Sega Blast is coming back in here but there's nothing more to do on this machine so this game gladiator if you played this game this is a great game i played this uh at the bowling i used to when we used to go bowling all the time this was a a game i would always play every time i went to the bowling i would play this game if i got all my my buttons working here i've got the low oh shoot the lower one yep that's middle that's top get that, pick up these and I'll get myself back into the rhythm here so you got you've got to use your shield whoops to block everything pick up these and kill the bats as well so it's, you've got a lot going on with the, the controls here just get past this a little bit and then you will end up having to fight someone and you lose your armor every time they there you go, so I, I got his middle armour and shot straight through the middle of him to win. You can see I've lost my middle middle, middle armour there. I'm wearing pink underwear apparently. Uh, so I've got to watch out for that. So I can go up and down and there we go, got him in the leg. And I don't know, I really like this game. I don't know if you can really hear the audio, but it's got some really cool... Um, whoops, I better fight still. Get past this part. Got some really cool audio sort of effects, like a big sort of reverb, reverb sound. Makes it sound really big. Turn it up a little bit. We can get that. So it's, got, it's got this big reverb. Sounds really nice. So the, the game was always sort of cranked up to this sort of level, and uh, it just sounded so cool. And I'm back here. I'm out here. I can get a special shield thing. If I, oops. Oh no, here it is. I've got to pick this up, I think. Uh, shoot and get it. You can do this thing with your shield to make a, a barrier. Um, get that, I can't remember now. Oh, shoot. Extra shield. Pick that up. No, oh, I can't do that special thing. I'm losing all my uh, all my armor, guys. Oh, now it's the big baddie. Oh, okay. <laughs> Should have put up my shield. See if I can get this guy. I get all my shields back at least. Take him on. So yeah, guys, if you haven't played this game, oh wow, got me in the leg. If you haven't played this game, play it. It's huge fun. And if you did play it back in the day, then you'll know exactly whoop, you'll know exactly what I mean. And a different sort of dynamic if you think about all the games that were out. 
you know, this works very differently. Pass the boss onwards. Now I've got this flashing one, so I think this is where I can do my little thing. Let's try. Oh, actually, <laughs> when we get to the next stage. By the way, I because I moved this machine from, from over there, I've got to get rid of the um, the degaussing. <laughs> Again, I'll use my speaker trick. <laughs> there we go, there's that barrier. That sort of fends off everything, so that's pretty cool. Pick up that. Whoa. One. Starts getting a little bit tricky. All these things flying at you. I'm looking a bit beat up here. Okay, who we got? Oh, this guy doesn't look friendly at all. Let's be in the leg. <laughs> nice armor. Oh shoot. <laughs> you love the sounds. That's so good. Last guy. Come on. Yee. Who's next? Oh, same. You can give him in the leg there. That's my signature shot. Oh, this guy looks a little bit meaner. Oh, and he got me in the leg too. <laughs> That's it. So yeah, I, I don't know if this is saving high scores, maybe it's not. But anyway guys, that, oh, <laughs> that's, um, that's well worth getting. I'll just turn that down. So yeah, there's nothing more to say on this guy, so let's move around to the APB machine. So with the APB machine, guys, you can see the screen is still stuffed. If you saw the recent episode, I just did a recent episode on this one, so we really did talk about this one a lot. <laughs> Get that screen, oh there we go. Look at that, it's come back. Maybe I should do a quick game. Should we do a quick game? <laughs> let's see how, let's how well I go. Let's at least forward this in here. We'll have another quick game while the screen is uh, behaving itself. And uh, have a little bit of fun. Oh, jeez. <laughs> right, oh, it's back, it's back. Okay, is it gonna stay back? All right, let's try. Um, so yeah, I really did cover this machine a lot, and uh, let's go to medium. I think I did easy on the on the last one, so at least you'll see a different stage. Um, but yeah, this this game this this game's cool. I, I, you know, I do like it. It's not APB, of course, <laughs> and you really need to check out that other episode to see the, all the strange reasons why this cab is as mixed up as it is um, but this this game's very whoops very accessible and can be a little bit of a, a challenge oh wow don't drink and drive guys that's my that's 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 the lesson that's my advice <laughs> I would be nailing this otherwise had a had a couple of beers and I'm all over the shop. So, yeah, so this this is cool. It's a fun game. Um, I sort of talked about the fact that I didn't really in that last video, the APB video, I talked about I really don't know what I'm gonna do with this cab. Uh, I think I touched on a few things. Um, I don't know if I mentioned that you know it'd be nice to get again in here to get a 25 inch monitor. I think that would be that would be pretty awesome. By the way, time exceeded, not time extended. So used to seeing time um, extended uh, when you see that message, but it's time exceeded. So I didn't make it. So yeah, I, I'm, I'm going to sit and just continue to think about this machine and what I want to do or not do to it. 
I think if I do everything else in here, uh, and naturally at some point, you know, I'm either going to make a decision on doing this up somehow, changing it, putting a bigger screen in, maybe having multi panels, pole position, use, I don't know, there's all sorts of things I could do. Uh, or maybe some other cabinet's going to come along, which is like, that would be a perfect replacement for this machine. So I'm just going to wait and see. <laughs> we'll wait and see on this one. Not much more to say. As I said, if you want to know a lot more about this particular machine, go check out that APB special. Went into it into some depth. So let's move around now to the Hyper Olympic slash Defender machine. And of course, the one thing I will do is I'll get that chassis fixed on the APB. That's definitely going to happen. All right, so what's happening with this Hyper Olympic? Well, we've started a couple of series, which you again can check out. A couple of previous videos, we've already started work on this. And uh, I'm pleased to report that we are a l quite a long way further than the last video that was released. And so there should be one coming up also in the new year about this. And my intention is that this will be up and running in the near future, which will be fantastic. And of course that will be running as Hyper Olympic on the original Hyper Olympic board set. Uh, and that I'm going to really enjoy because that Hyper Olympic game, I've said it before, again, it's just one of those really, really good party games. Great for new people that want to try out these sort of machines. Two player action or up to four if you're in a cocktail, but two players best. And you'll have lots and lots of fun with that game if you get it. Same, you know, remember it's a track and field in the States, so Hyper Olympic track and field, same thing. Uh, and then I will, you know, sometime, I'm, I'm thinking that it will happen in 2017, but I want to progress towards uh, at least either getting a dedicated Defender um, control panel and having the ability to swap one in for the other and having Defender running in here in some way, shape or form, or having a multi-Williams type of setup with that controller that has, you know, all the standard Williams games, um, maybe running on an FPGA type setup. I think there was one created for the multi Williams, uh, so it'd be running on the original hardware. It's not emulated hardware, if the way way that I understand it works. Uh, that would be pretty cool. So uh, again, remember, you guys, some of you guys may not recognise this as being a Defender cab. Clearly, it's not the same as the original Defender cab from the States. But this was the uh, Taito, Taito release, they were their cabinet, they released Defender in New Zealand was the one that I played. Um, so for me, this is very nostalgic, this particular machine, and I can't wait to get a Defender um, set of controls on here and to play Defender in this cabinet. That, that to me is going to really bring back some memories from that, that little corner store. Um, so yeah, so that's that's the plan with this guy. So it's going to be a bit of a chameleon and uh, a little bit of work throughout the year. But the first step is definitely get Hyper Olympic going. Um, and, you know, I'll probably get that going and then I'll tackle, think, you know, aesthetic things like the control panel and getting that fixed up and looking nice. But I think just getting it working is, is step one. I'll be happy with that. So yeah, that's the plan with this one. Let's move across to the virtual pinball. Just check my watch and we have a activity challenge. You <laughs> can see, see that? It says ring in the new year, 10.02 p.m. Well, that's interesting. What's the time now? Well, it's quarter past 11. That makes no sense whatsoever. And it's not New Year's Eve just yet, but it might be when you're watching this. <laughs> So ring in the new year for me. So the virtual pinball, what can I say about this guy? Well, as I said, we haven't done a full feature release on here or, or video on here uh, about this particular machine. I'm getting somewhat spoiled from playing real pinball recently and it's making me, um, you know, it's making me really want real pinball over the virtual equivalent. Having said that though, you know, I think once I haven't played it for a real pinball for a while and I play on this, uh, then it's pretty cool. Let's have a go. And Tales of the Arabian Nights is one of my f top favorite tables for sure. You know, I think if one of these came up, if 
for a reasonable price, I, I would be struggling, really, really struggling, because this really is up there in terms of a, of a favourite table. Let's see how it goes. Um, I'm still going to have problems with this um, flipper. I heard the sound go multiple times there actually, so I don't think that problem is fixed. Let's see. What sort of flipper response do we have? Nah. We went straight away. I can see that it was delaying there. So interesting though, the flippers uh, yeah, they're no, they're, they're delayed. Got stuck there. So I don't know. We've still got issues, and as I said, this has been running now for ah, it's been running for for over an hour. So what could be going on here? So that doesn't seem so bad. So you can hear me click the side. See when the flipper goes up. It's, yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, as soon as you play it, you can tell straight away if there's a problem or not. Now, you might have heard the cabinet rumble there because we've got the, sh the shaker motor and, um, and the gear. It would be just a shaker motor for that particular effect. But all of that stuff really does add a lot of life to the experience of this table. When it's all working flawlessly, it's really awesome. So again, right now, flippers are pretty responsive. So I'm not sure what is going on? Ah, there, bang, straight away. You could hear the sound just repeated a couple of times. I tried to flip and then it just, just didn't work. So yeah, there's still issues here. Um, such a shame because when this is working, it works brilliantly. Love all the flashes. This really adds to, so I know a lot of people put these flashes at the end of the table, but I think you put them to the side here. A lot of the times they sort of line up with where the flashes are actually on the table. You know, often th there's three on this side, two on this. It just seems to work out that way. Um, so, and some of them have really good coordinated lights with the lights that are on the table with the flash units themselves. And it can just really enhance the effect of a virtual setup, guys. So, so yeah, we still have issues with this machine. <laughs> so what have I got planned for 2017? Well, A, I've got to fix that problem. <laughs> That's, has to be fixed, that's a uh, priority number one. The other key thing with this machine is I need to get a new plunger um, accelerometer combination unit. The other thing is is that this hasn't really been finished at the back here, you know the speakers are just stuck in behind. I don't have really quality speakers in there either so that really needs to be done. Um, sort out those speakers a bit more. The lights, they stick out a bit, it's hard to get the the uh, the monitor up and down when you want to service inside the machine. Um, I need to maybe cut some channels for the wiring for the for the lighting and on the side and, and I don't know work on a way on how they can be moved out easily so that I can get that out, in and out uh, for servicing because that is a bit of a problem. And um, other than that, there's some um, on the side here for the buttons, these are uh, translucent so they could be lit and so you know I do have the extra uh, MagnaSave buttons down here as well, be nice for games that support MagnaSave for those to be lit so that you know that they're available, uh, but it'd be nice to, to light those up as well. Uh, the topper needs to be uh, just screwed down with the lights. They're all stuck up there just randomly, sort of relatively loose. And it tends to move around a bit, so on the topper I need to sort out those lights. Uh, so anyway guys, that's pretty much it for this machine. There's nothing else really more to do. It's pretty much complete. Um, you know, maybe uh, an upgrade to the PC and graphics if this went 4K, you know, but I think I'm just going to hold off and see. I'm almost in my mind waiting for that day that someone comes out with an ultra wide OLED and with specific tables for that, and then and that's the day that I'll make a change for sure. 
All right, so that is the virtual pin. Let's swing around now to the... Um, well, first of all, let's just have a quick discussion, really quick, about the drums. I know it's got nothing to do about arcades, but it's a quick discussion about that. So really happy with this drum setup. As I mentioned before, this was all over the other side of the arcade originally. It wasn't really in the right place. It does take up a lot of room, that's for sure. It'd be great to be able to fit another two arcade machines in here, or maybe even three around this corner. Um, the thought obviously has crossed my mind a few times, but there's just look, there's no way I'm going to get rid of this kit. This is a this has taken years and years and years to put together. Um, you know, it's a bits of kit. It was bought different pieces from eBay, left, right, and centre, and stuck together. And um, it's my it was my dream kit. You know, I'm not an amazing drummer, but this just gives me so much enjoyment jamming against music and just having a really good time. So maybe guys will have uh, a bit of a jam one day, I don't know, for something a bit different, a bit of fun. Uh, but yeah, this kit's staying here. You know, in this theatre, you know, it's not only just the arcades that happen here, we have music going on. My sons play musical instruments as well. We've been in here having a jam. They've been on the bass and the guitar and they've got keys as well. And you can do karaoke here as, as well. And, you know, play drums against songs and do karaoke. It's just a huge lot of fun if you're, you know, into music. So yeah, this is staying here, guys. Um, a lot of fun. So let's, uh, in fact, before we get to the cocktail, <laughs> the thing that we missed out is the ice cold beer. So let's talk about that next. This, as I mentioned, again, if you go back to the episode, talking about this in, in a lot of detail, it's just a skeleton cab, it's just the control panel and it's virtualized up on the screen. So that's all I've got here to play with. It is a fun game. I think for 2017 I'm going to be looking at doing a couple of things with this setup. So the first thing is I definitely want to get a bigger screen. I want to get a screen that really mirrors the size of the real play field. This is a lot smaller. That's the first thing. The second thing is I may end up building a little bit of a sort of a facade around the control panel to sort of make it seem like it's a half an ice cold beer stuck in the wall. That 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 could take a bit of work um, and probably will be low low in the list of priorities but it, it's something I want to strive towards sort of improving this setup. The Having the real controls is really really great but yeah, it sort of needs the additional surrounds and stuff. Even, you know, the front glass and that would be really cool as well. But I don't know how far I'm going to go with that. Now, the thing about the big screen as well is that what I'd ultimately like to do is to have this as a touch screen. Uh, because given the fact that I'm when I get the Sega Blast back in here, currently I've got the jukebox set up on the fake Sega Blast. And I'm not going to have that in here anymore and really I've got awesome speakers and a sub behind me that these drums run off so ideally you can get some really good pub jukebox software that's touchscreen um, orientated and that would be great here so you could take this screen flip it up higher on, on its side and have two dual screens where you can select your music like a music video from the 80s and it would play on the top screen and then people could carry on selecting it here. And of course with Windows 10 you can flick onto another screen and you could have your Zeke's Peak or Ice Cold Beer um, fired up to, to play as well and then sort of, you know, flick back and choose your music. That, that would be the way to do it. At the moment I'm emulating this, I'm running through VMware on a Mac OS, so to do that properly uh, I probably will end up getting a dedicated Windows PC and to run both the DJ software and the ice cold beer emulation and then I'll just have the Mac come in on a different input and be able to you know effectively change inputs to to use the Mac for all the drumming software and, and whatnot. So that's the plan there. Again that's a sort of a midterm goal during 2017. That big touch screen they're not cheap for the sort of size that I'm thinking of so I'm really going to have to sort of look at that really carefully um, but I think that will really improve this this experience in this corner I won't have a crack on the ice cold beer it takes a little while to get through it um, I have got up to nine 
uh, I think Mitchie, my son Mitchell got all the way, he's got his high score here, he got all the way to, to 10. Did he get to 10? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah, he did. So we've, we, we stuck his high score on here to, to beat 7,050. So anyway, it's a great, great party game and one that if you could get a real one, again, we can't get them here in Australia, only a few I think exist over here that have been imported but over in the US guys pick pick one of these machines up it's, it's just the sort of thing you need in your in your home arcade totally accessible people are going to play it they'll love it all right so that's the plan on that let's now move around to the homemade uh, cocktail which you haven't seen a lot of let's check it out and surprise surprise on our cocktail we have an unexpected IO error has occurred Windows Boot Manager I had this machine going when I first started and I did notice, and again this is another one that I'm going to turn the update on, uh, update off and the network off because I saw it updating and doing a reboot and once it did a reboot, this is what it's come up with. <laughs> so I don't have a keyboard or anything plugged in so what I'm going to do is just power it off and power it back on, let's see if it gets past this error. Okay so <laughs> it's come back, oh come back up with an initial file for doing a restore and then bang it's come straight back up to the error again so what I'm gonna have to do guys I'm gonna have to get a keyboard and uh, and uh, get a mouse onto this to sort it out but again just straight after another update now I can't blame Windows 10 for this because this one's on Windows 7 but this is the situation. I have to lock these PCs down and just get them off the internet. It's the only way. It's the only way to keep them running without continual issues. Shame, but true. Um, so I think what I'll do is I'll just quickly talk about this particular uh, cocktail machine and we'll go into it a lot more detail when we do a, a, a special on it and I'll show you all the features. Got LED blinking in here and all the lights change and all the rest of it. Uh, this was a scratch built cabinet that I created originally and look it's okay uh, it does the job but um, again if I'm if I'm honest I'm, I'm you know I really want original cabs rather than than the homemade jobs um, having said that you know this is a lower height than the normal cocktails which tend to be a lot higher so it's a pretty cool height and nice and compact and you know and it does work it's got an lcd which i don't like um although having said that playing on here is actually very very nice um don't have a lot of problems with that but i mean clearly with a big crt in here that would be so much better so this is another machine that i really don't know i mean i've had some weird and wonderful ideas about this too guys because the big thing, this is a strange thing about cocktails. There's not a lot of cocktail games which are head to head at the same time. You know, there's the Atari football one. There is a, a Space Invaders one, which um, I often use on, on this particular cabinet. Um, but there's not many others. The rest are, you know, turn about. You, you, the, the screen flips and the other person can play. And, that, and that's cool. I mean, that's, that's fine and everything. Uh, gives a person a chance to have a drink while the you know the other guy's playing and stuff, but it just seems like such a wasted opportunity that they had this head-to-head -head setup. They could have made so many games that were interactive, and and there's not a lot like that. Ha having said that, of course there are some other games which are interactive with four, up to four players, and of course one of them is Hyper Olympic, and um, or Track and Field, and you know that's on a that's released on a cocktail cabinet for up to four players and there's things like pac-man royale well that's four players there's games like warlords well that's four players and in the you know in a home arcade scenario that's the sort of games that i would really love to be able to have going on on this sort of cocktail it's been great to play you know scramble and juno first and all that on here but i can do that now on you know on the astro city and stuff so i don't really need this cabinet for that but what would be ultimate is if i could play you know pac-man royale and warlords and you know those four player games and have a you know a dedicated table where a lot of people can have fun at the same time 
I think that would be really cool. I just don't know how that transpires into a cabinet and what that cabinet would look like. I mean, I was even thinking, you know, even on here, you could literally have, you know, four spinners on the top here and then have your three buttons for your Hyper Olympic next to it. And that would also double up as your Warlord button and with the spinner. And that wouldn't be too intrusive on the top. But of course, that's a that's a that's a Frankenstein <laughs> cocktail, <laughs> isn't it? Um, so yeah, I don't know what the answer is to that. Getting those all those games running in one cab, maybe it does have to be some sort of Franken cab <laughs> to make that work. Is it going to be acceptable or not? I don't know. So that, that that's been ticking around in my mind, guys. It's another one of those sort of long term projects that one day it might just fall and I just go bang. That's <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Until then, uh, this is a again a longer term thought process about what I'm going to do. A little bit like the APB. It's going to sit on the back burner until then. And of course, in the meantime, I'll get this fixed up. God knows what's happened here, uh, and get it at least working again. So let's move on from this guy, and let's talk about the last arcade machine in this room before we finish with that little special item that I mentioned earlier on. Um, so let's look at the Missile Command. So here is the original Tejo Missile Command, and it was... Uh, it was a barn find. It was literally a barn find. And, you know, this was a sorry state. It had a lot of rust on it. It wasn't working. The board wasn't working. Uh, and I've done a lot to it since then to restore it. And, of course, that was sort of pre before I started the channel. So you can see now it is actually working, which is cool. We've got the controls half out. They've been out for a while. I have rebuild kits. For the trackball because they're completely locked up rusted up solid and um, I'm able to replace those once those have been replaced this game is playable you know it's playable now I just can't control it so that's next on the list the screen is is not too bad there's some focus issues with it uh, but that is the original screen and the original chassis and nothing's been done on that um, the screen's got horrible burn-in, guys. I mean, this this would have been the original, you know, the monitor in here since it started, I'm sure. Uh, although the colours are great. Um, yeah, the burn-in. The burn-in for this bottom piece of the Missile Command, wow, it's just solid. You wouldn't want to put any other game on this machine. You can't tell with this running. Um, when the screen flips when the other person is playing, you probably, you might notice it. Although there's a lot of, you know, black where all the you know the top part of the screen so maybe you won't but anyway so that's all we're really going to say about this particular one clearly missile command is just a fantastic classic game for so many reasons you know the whole cold war nuclear thing that was going on back in the day um you know is there such simple graphics and you know there is a big story behind you know what was going on at the time and uh, it, it is a genuine clay and it, it, it's a unique gameplay. It's very different sort of unique gameplay out of out of every other game that was available. So a definite keeper. I've said it before. I really do want a Space Invaders though in this sort of cabinet. I'm, I'm out of room uh, for that. Although might, maybe right. I'm looking right now, right in the middle of the room here. <laughs> maybe I could stick it just right in the middle there I don't know. Um, but anyway so guys that's it in terms of you know where we're up to with the current cabinets and where I'm going to take them in 2017 what I want to show you now is one final little change that I've done which is still in progress actually which I've done to the theater um, oh the screen rolled then by the way when I tapped just noticed <laughs> check that out in the video um, so one final thing I want to show you which um, I don't know I, I get excited about you might not but share this with me and I'll show you it now check that out guys yes Atari computer memo pad which means up on the rejector here because you can see my shadow <laughs> so we're in the very much in the dark here, so the 
Let's see if this is going to focus. Here we go. What does that say? Atari 800 on the amplifier. Well, and this is a new amplifier here, guys. Um, my Yamaha ended up dying on me. The uh, pre-transformer for the standby circuit looked like it had died, so I could not turn the amplifier on, so I had to pick up another one. And uh, this is the guy right here. And in doing so, I, it was too big. It was actually too big to fit under the shelf, so I ended up sticking it on top. Uh, along with the center speaker which is now on top and the Foxtel unit and all the rest of it and then moving the screen up above it and that allowed me with a whole lot more space underneath to put some very special items and you can see them glowing here and it's all in the dark at the moment guys but hopefully you can see it look at that it's the Atari 800 of course and that is hooked up through the amplifier using the uh, composite video out. Well, it's actually, there's a five pin special DIN on the side of the Atari 800. And that has a, I think it has a composite out and also has two uh, RCAs for uh, SVGA. But you then need to convert that, I think, back into a normal SVGA socket. This amp, amp doesn't actually have that as an input anyway. So it's running on ordinary composite. Uh, and mono output uh, split into stereo and we're sitting next to the 800 here it's so nice to play to play the original hardware guys you know and I haven't pla haven't played this since it was set up on the Atari shelf a while ago uh, so it's great to have it set up again and this is what I live for when it comes to this <laughs> comes to using original equipment and turning on the disk drive. We turn it on and then listen to this. Now you guys are going to think that I'm strange, <laughs> I'm sure, but this sound of turning on and then hearing the um, the loading, we're on a select screen at the moment, so I'll just choose Arcom, which is the game up here on the menu. Listen to this thing. This brings back so many memories, guys, when you're loading up games like this on the Atari. And we are in the dark. It's quite intimate here. And of course, the uh, the projector always looks a lot lighter on the video camera than it really is. But here we go, Archon, an amazing electronic arts. Look at that, <laughs> 1983. This is a great game. Let me get this up on the tripod. We're going to have a quick game. Okay, guys. So we're going to start this game. It looks very much like chess. So the computer is going to be the dark. On the right hand side the blue I'm going to be the light on the left hand side and I'll show you how this works so effectively your characters are mine on the left of course being light they will um, have more power when they are they are on light squares so if I move this guy for example over to here if someone attacks me on that square then I'm going to have more chance of killing them now in the background you can see that a lot of the colors are changing so a lot of them going towards the dark colors at the moment so on those varied squares you want to get off those because obviously as it gets darker you're going to be in trouble um, but you know in the light you'll be okay now this guy's just sent a summoned a spell and i'm on a dark square and it's going to be a little bit hard to see here on the projector um, and so i'm probably going to get nailed in one shot if he actually shoots me and i can't really see i must admit um, whoops and he's got me which is a shame because that guy that I had is actually normally pretty good. In fact, this unicorn guy is really awesome, so I want to get him off, but I actually I can't move him uh, and when there's a guy in front of me. So let's get this guy out. And, and all of them have you know different powers, and they have different powers on both sides. You've got different sorts of characters. So it's the other thing that makes this cool. You can see now all the background uh, colors that are changing are now going lighter so I've got a lot more chance to kill these guys if I grab this guy who's like really like a pawn 
um, he's really just got a little sword thing and the other guy's got a club and so I've got to like hit him oh shoot he's <laughs> He hit me three times. I probably only needed to hit him twice and I would have got him. Uh, but nonetheless. And the idea is that you need to see these flashing um, air, uh, squares. You need to get all your pieces on those flashing squares. If you can get all of them, and of course the hardest is your main wizard here um, because he's the most powerful, then you effectively win the game. So yeah, that's um, that's sort of what it's like. It's a battle for those positions. This is a really cool uh, one on the computer. It's got a shapeshifter. So whatever uh, whatever guy that I use to attack him, he will turn into that guy. So if I use a really low guy like this, he's going to turn into the same. But we're on a dark square here, so he only needs to really hit me once, and he'll get me like that. <laughs> So, yeah, so this, this game, again, guys, this is one of those ones that came out and it was like, wow, what is this? I mean, you've got to think this was well before the days of, like, battle chess and stuff. Um, and this was, you know, early days of electronic arts. I know a lot of people, you know, give EA a lot of, <laughs> a lot of stick these days. It's clearly a different company than what it was back, back then. Um, but, you know, there was a lot of innovative games came out or were at least published by EA uh, back in the day and, you know, they were really seen as one of the leading providers of awesome innovative games and this is no exception. Can I get this guy? I doubt it. He's, he's super powerful and I'm way out of practice. <laughs> wow, done, destroyed. So there you go, guys. I'm going to have a lot of fun on the Atari here, um, you know, with the original disk drive, loading up all my old discs. We'll probably do, a, a you know, an episode on some of the special games in the series here because there's, there's a number of them which I could go on and on about. But uh, we'll leave it there for now. Let's swing the tripod back around and we'll finish up this video. So there you go guys, that's the end of the special end of year review. I hope you enjoyed it. I don't know how long it was. I don't know if we uh, sort of got bogged down and talking about the individual machines there, I don't know. But uh, let me know if you like it, give it a thumbs up if you did. And look at this photo. Let me show you this photo. So here you can see, here's me when I was you know, about 11, I think. And there, there it is, mate. There is the uh, Atari 800 sitting there. Got an Atari 810 above there that was connected up to the uh, to the printer. Got a tape drive sitting on the right-hand side. Um, an old TV, which was the monitor. And, well, it would have been a new TV then. I'm pretending to be on the phone, looking all official. Uh, the 810 disk drive, or I think I might have had the 1050 then, there's a bit of a story behind that, but uh, that would have been sitting off just out of the shot on the right hand side. And, you know guys, I was really lucky growing up, this, this was just such an awesome setup to have. If you, if you think back then, you know, being able to, to have one of those computers and, and, you know, the printer and all the setup like that, I was extremely lucky to have that, very grateful to my parents um, for setting all that up and you know they used it a little bit but really I used that you know 95% of the time and it got to the point where this whole setup was actually out in the living room area initially. I used it so much um, they ended up thinking that I really needed it in my bedroom. <laughs> my bedroom was so small uh, they decided to swap with me and this where, where this table is here was actually in the master bedroom of the house They actually gave me the master bedroom and set all this up for me uh, And they actually had this uh, had their double bed in this tiny tiny room that I was in before So, you know, I'm extremely thankful for that and it's funny actually because just today My own son just got himself a new desk for his room and set up <laughs> a PC and a Mac and um, and all his musical gear and stuff on the side and, and it just took me back and to this particular shot so I had to dig out this particular photo and it was quite appropriate considering I got the Atari all working today as well guys so you can see that yeah I've had a, a long history since way back then 
with the Atari 800 is extremely uh, important to me as a, a machine in the, in the history of, of gaming through to, to, to arcades. Um, and you know the nostalgia that that machine brings back to me the fact that i've got it here and can fire it up and and play it after all these years and you know go through all the games that i used to play i mean seriously that that transports me back so if you guys if you guys have think back if you've got systems like this and if you don't own them right now go pick them up go get them um, go relive those memories because it really is pretty special and to be able to share that with others as well is just just awesome so guys I am going to sign off here but I drink to 2017 I drink to you and your health and all good things with arcades that will come out of this year and you know be safe as I always say joy yourself um, let's have a quick drink Happy New Year. Hope you enjoy the video. Really look forward to seeing you uh, for the next one, of course. And as you know, as you can see from this video, there's a lot in store. So if you haven't subscribed and you've come this far and you like what you see, please subscribe. Check out the older videos as well. i uh, love to see you on board. Please comment and, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to reply back to your comments and stuff. I see you guys as an ex extension of uh, my friends network in terms of uh, people who love arcades and, and want to share the hobby. So uh, happy to have those discussions. And uh, yeah, have a good one. Have a good time. See you in the next video. The next one will be the Seeker Blast Takedown. Remember, we'll get down, dirty, back to business. Uh, enough of this fun stuff. <laughs> Uh, but there's a few other fun videos that will come out after that. So that will be the next one that's coming out next week, guys. Have a good one. Remember, ciao for now.